My baby looking too good, yeah she perfect, know she worth it When she pull up all them man them flirting And yeah she know that she a dime, call up on my line Told her baby bring it one time, yeah Girl sit down and bring Yo, what's really good though is your girl Yezzy is there and you are locked into another banging episode of this right here. Hey sis, obviously we are formally known, you know, for being formal with it. It's Hey Sis UK, it just makes it easier for you to watch. But if you want to just call out Hey Sis, Hey Sis is the name. A lot's been going on, man. This has been a crazy week. And who better to deliver you some of the craziest things that have been going on this week with my own little opinion, you know, as a social commentator on the things that are going on. First and foremost, to my sisters and my brothers of Hey Sis, I gotta say a big thank you to you guys. My personal goal was to hit 10k on TikTok. Your girl is on 13,000 plus. There's been some viral videos going around. <laughs> you would have seen a couple of them, so I wanna say thanks because I couldn't have done it without you. Uh, next on actual Hey Sis UK, the Instagram page, that's where all the main stuff happens. Like if you want everything Hey Sis, you have to go on Hey Sis underscore UK. The goal is to hit 10K. We're currently on 8,000 plus. So we're going to get there bit by bit, 100%. Over here, because that's where you're watching it, unless you're listening on Spotify. But if you are watching on YouTube, hey, <laughs> the goal is to hit 1,000 subscribers. We are currently on 990 something. I don't even know. By the time this video drops, it could be on 1K. You never know. I've got something special to announce, but... If you want to know what it is, you're going to have to watch the video to the end. I know. I mean, not like you don't do that already, to be fair. But I think it's good to save the best till last. But let's get into this week. Before we do that, make sure you get yourself a cuppa. I know some of you do watch from like Canada and Kenya, just in different countries outside of the UK. Get a cuppa, get a cup of tea, sit back and relax, enjoy this one. I'm going to take my first sip of the episode <clears throat> probably should have gone for a warm drink i'm currently sipping on some apple juice but let's get into this you would have seen the video and the clips that went on at a certain afrobeat artist concert on my lay if i pronounced it wrong don't kill me i'm trying but there's a lot of things to unpack from this situation i just feel like when you get past the memes and the laughter and the general shock of things, we need to get into it. That's why this episode is going to be talked about. And the actual title of the episode is going to be expectations and relationships. With what's been going on, especially with the video that went viral on TikTok about who the F did I marry? I feel like we're neglecting stating our expectations from the jump from as early as possible. There's some people that are like, yeah, I don't always say from the first encounter whether or not i have kids i think we got our priorities warped when it comes to expectations so we're going to talk about it okay i didn't even tell you to subscribe make sure you do subscribe so the omale concert is this omale let me get into the linguistics of it all as an artist i'm an artist if you didn't know i make music i rap i songwrite the whole shebang if you want a good show one of the elements of having a fantastic show is crowd interaction. You might look someone dead in the eye. You might touch your hand. You might do a little dance with somebody. Gone are the days that people danced gently on stage. Gone are the days where the actual participant, like the fan, would just sit down and the artist would kind of dance around them, give them like a little light lap dance, very light. In this situation, Omale was, you know, who wants to come on stage, even asked this. And this girl, I think her name's Jess, went with her boyfriend. And let me get the context right and everything, yeah. They have not been going out for seven years. He stated with the streamer Kai Sinat, and we're going to get to that, that they have been together for just under a year. But still formally, officially girlfriend and boyfriend at this point. <laughs> not today. He says, who wants to go on stage? Many girls are screaming. I'm talking arms reaching out and everything. I didn't expect you, yeah, if you're in a relationship where you are claiming each other, you're going out, your boyfriend and girlfriend, I personally would not scream and shout to go on stage of even my favourite artist. It's a bit mad. She's there, the video's in 4K, you can't miss it. She goes on stage and part of the actual routine that Omelie does to give a good show is that he takes them behind the curtain and you just see a silhouette, very sexy silhouettes going on. 
he's dancing, she's grinding. And I think everyone was kind of ready for that. Not the boyfriend. I think he was ready for her to just stand there. He tried to be supportive, yeah? She decided to do a lot more than just grinding. She was doing everything suggestive that you could imagine. If you've seen the video, you know. To the point that even Omale himself was like, whoa, <laughs> she's a lot. At this point, she's jumping on him. Even after they've done the little routine, the curtain's up, this girl's jumping. As in both legs up in the air, wrapped around him, boom. Like her man just came back from war. The boyfriend this whole time is still there watching, present. Security's laughing at him. People in the crowd are recording him. And this is why I said we need to state expectations from the jump. You need to be wary of who you're dating. And if you notice traits of someone you're dating is very thirsty for things. They're very desperate for things. To have the traits of thirstiness and being just desperate is something of a red flag. Because if you meet someone and go, oh, I have a celebrity crush, that's one thing. But if they're like, yo, if I had the chance, I would. And it's like, raw, would you really? Yeah, I would. Mm, that's a bit thirsty. Because... A lot of people in this situation, this girl is thirsty for fame and it's very dangerous when you come across someone you're dating that is thirsty for just fame. Whether it comes with money attached to it or not, that attention-seeking trait is something that's going to give you headache. Run far away from that. Even some friends, if all they have to do is embarrass you to get like a little bit of fame, a little bit of attention, or they just genuinely seek attention from the inside out, it's an ugly trait. And I don't think it's one, whether it be romantically inclined or a friendship, something that you should firm. Personally, I don't think he should have stayed there to watch. From when you're screaming, shouting and your arms reached out, I don't care if I paid for the tickets, I'll go home. Like you've already told me where my place is in your life. And that's if Omale, I don't know what her expectation is, but this girl thinking she's dancing hard, did she think he was going to take her backstage, invite her to the after-after party in the hotel lobby? You know what I mean? Did he think that he would say, oh, my gosh, you're the love of my life, the way you dance. I need a wife for you. I don't know if she knows how the UK is set up and how the US is set up. You might get yourself a spot on a reality TV show if you did that in America maybe in the uk you'll be named and shamed and one thing i've noticed in this whole situation is that outwardly she tries to make it look like i don't care i did what i did and what sometimes people have this kind of exterior of so what and what i did what i did but deep down we know that you would have had a bit of shame maybe shed a tear or two behind closed doors but for you it's like you don't want to give the satisfaction of people knowing that they were right the actions you took were wrong whether it be your boyfriend a first date whatever the way you carry yourself is mad and some people yeah when someone's not famous they'll be carrying themselves with the highest esteem crown on their head the whole nine the whole nine yards yeah then when you get around famous people you are acting up i don't understand why people act up around famous people I don't understand why people throw all of their morals and values out the window because you've seen someone that's famous. Like, it's weird because are they really morals and values if they just chop and change depending on the setting that you're in? Red flag. <laughs> it's a big red flag. For that girl, it's like, was it worth it? When you really deep it, and it's not just a cut and shot situation because... I've always found it weird when people faint in the presence of someone famous or I can understand nervousness. We get it. the proximity to a celebrity. You don't get it every day. You might be a bit nervous, clammy. I'll take crying on the spot. But fainting like that is mad. And Kaisen at the streamer that I was talking about, he actually told the girl, you know, would you like to come on and tell your side of the story? And she said, no, I'm not coming on unless, you know, you pay me a little bit of, as she worded, compensation. And Kai Sinat was like, hell no. Now, don't get me wrong. Drop the peas in it. Like, Kai Sinat, you're a content producer. You produce content. This would have been great content to get the girl that everyone's talking about for the past couple of days. But it made me wonder, right, if she's putting a price to this, it makes me think, how far would she go for fame and attention? 
And it's kind of weird because the guy came on for free. He doesn't care. I think at this point he just wants to talk, say what it is and move on. This girl's even made an announcement that she's going to do a story time. Now, I don't know how much of a story time you're going to give because the whole thing about story times is you're going to tell us something we don't know. Darling, uh, we've seen everything. Everything. The silhouette was uh, very uh, out there. I don't know what else you're going to tell us. Maybe after the concert, what happened? We did see a video of you looking like you had to be reassured by a bunch of girls. Like, did I do too much? For you to ask, did I do too much? I don't know if you're trying to be funny, but you know you did too much. Even if you were single, I'm not going to lie. It was mad thirsty. Like, it was embarrassing. It was cringy to see. Like, he's a celeb. You're a girl, a girl of many, in the many cities. He's on tour. Like, you're not special to him. And then you just see the boyfriend walking off in the distance. It was kind of sad. It was a very sad sight to see. But I'm not even saying all this because I care for that relationship. At the end of the day, that young man, I'll, I'll be honest with you, he knew she didn't rate him. You've been together with someone for under a year and she does a stunt like this. I'm sure looking back on it, there were many occasions where she disrespected him, didn't rate him. And he just thought, oh, you know, maybe that's just her character. Maybe that's just how she is. It's a minor. Let me brush it off. The thing about disrespect, as it piles up, there's going to be a time where it's like you have to choose. Is this how you want to carry on in your relationship? Or are you happy with it going even further than what you just had to witness? And in this occasion, the whole world. A lot of people could have had the same level of disrespect, but maybe done in the privacy of their home or amongst a small group of people. His disrespect has been so loud that people are making jokes like, oh my gosh, this is guy, uh, this guy's villain error. For every man or boy that's had to transition into a man and they've gone through their villain era, there's that one girl that made them feel like, maybe I was just too nice. The problem is when you're going through a villain era, it's a toxic thing that you're going through. So you're only going to meet other hurt people. For you to actually be in a good relationship, you have to... Whoa, oh, okay. I think it's that time. Listen, <laughs> you're watching the episode, okay? You're enjoying it. You got yourself a cuppa, even a snack, but couple things i'm gonna need you to do first and foremost is numero uno i need you to subscribe if we're gonna take things up a notch that's important one you're gonna need to like and drop a cheeky comment i'll give you a bit of time yeah i think that's enough time let's get back to the episode and the thing is yeah when you find a man who's going through his villain era so he's a boy that's transitioned into a man and he's gone through that situation of i'm in my villain era because you met that one girl that made you feel like, was I being too nice? The problem with that is that you're enjoying being the villain. You're enjoying not having to consider someone's feelings. But along the way, you're just meeting other hurt people. It's this toxic cycle where you never actually grow. Like, you think you're improving because you've changed. Not all change means it's a good thing. And until you actually are in the process of healing or are healed then you can find the right relationship for you. Because until you meet the right person, you'll never have to question, am I being too nice? Because you would meet someone that appreciates all the niceties that come with you. But unfortunately for this guy, he may go through a villain era. I didn't really get that vibe when he did the stream with Kai Sanat. And Kai Sanat's just grinning from cheek to cheek because he's thinking, yeah, I got the guy of the hour. I'm going to set him up with 20 random women because that solves things. And just keep going with all this madness that's going on right now. I care for the situation because I feel like it's a learning situation for a lot of people in the sense of really know who you're dating. Set your expectations like, hey, are you the type of person to do this type of thing at a concert? If someone's back up is back up against a wall, like, oh, I don't know why you would ask me that. Uh, because I want to have peace of mind. If someone tells you something about someone you're dating... You should either be able to do one or two things. You should be either able to say they would never do that because I know them well enough or, yeah, I suspect them that they could do something like that. Again, because you know them well enough. We're a bit too scared when it comes to first dates. Like People don't want to ask hard questions in the first date. And it's not that, oh, do you see yourself marrying me? Or how many kids would you want to have with me? No, I'm not talking about those kind of hard questions when it comes to the first date. It's, 
hey, where do your morals and values stand with X, Y, Z? Are you into exclusive or non-exclusive relationships? Are you into polygamy? Are you, uh, you know, just a lot of questions that someone might go, whoa, but it's like, no, it's not a world situation. It's I want to know what I'm getting myself into. Are you someone that feels the need to lie, even if it's a little white lie? Oh, you know what I am? You know, I do tend to not really want to talk about situations. I run away from them. Okay. Noted. I'm not saying I don't care for the couple. It's, it's mainly the girl I don't care for because she's a chancer. I feel like she feels that her looks or her sexual prowess will get her the man she wants. And that will somehow be her happily ever after. We'll see how far that goes because her face is everywhere now. Like I said, it's not the US market, babe. You might not end up with the rapper or the ball player. You may just stay in the UK and be known as the girl that was bumping and grinding on Omale. And if that's how you want your claim to, as of now, five minutes of fame to be, then congratulations. But to other young ladies that are seeing her, and the way she moves, I can most definitely guarantee you, if you want some type of respect or regard from any man you're dating, that's not how you do it. And I'm not saying this from a place of judgment. I'm saying this from a place of sanity. Like It's actually mad to move like that. It's a concert. Go, enjoy the music, buy some merch, record some memories and go home. People trying to get on stage is mad. But this is what I actually care about. And this is why I wanted to address the Omale situation. My brothers and sisters, and particularly my brothers in Afrobeats, I'm someone that I've had the pleasure of witnessing a time when Afrobeats, when people were putting on American accents, it wasn't cool to be from Nigeria and to show yourself as a Nigerian. They were emulating a lot from the Americans. I saw it in the videos, the way in which they spoke, even the rap breakdowns. It was, it was a cringy time. But when you had some of the breakthrough artists that were still unapologetically African and Nigerian specifically, there was this wave that came about where it's like, yo, it's cool to be African. Now, the grassroots of Afrobeats, besides from the political side of things, when we're talking about your fellas, is fun. It's family friendly. You hardly see any swearing. If there are any sexual things that are said in the music it's sexual innuendos or it's said in a native language it's music that you can play with your friends and families and the kids at the hall parties afro beats is fun music but to my brothers when you're going on tour sing the songs you're already selling records you don't have to do all the extra sexualization that's going on right now we as a people specifically black people we are already hypersexualized. Afrobeats doesn't have to be hypersexualized. So when you're out on stage, you don't need to be doing too much with the girls. You might sing to one girl, let her go back into the crowd. Because this situation that happened, happened at the Omale concert, yeah? Let's just say the girl's a bit pissed. She's not really happy. She's turned out to look like the villain. Omale's not checking for her. She's lost her boyfriend. And let's just say she goes, you know what? I don't really like the way I was touched. You could find yourself in a legal situation. And yeah, people say, yo, it's not going to go to court. It will get dismissed. But when we're talking about big brands, a stain is a stain. And it's not worth risking it for just any regular degular girl or any person. Afrobeats is making money. Afrobeats is selling records right now. Afrobeats is so influential that you have American artists saying, yo, I want to feature with whoever the hot guy is right now. And I'm saying to my brothers, the money's coming in. The tours look good. The houses are getting bigger and bigger. I love to see it. Trust and believe. Because I was banging at Afro beats when people were telling me what the hell was that in school. But what I don't want to see is that once one of us gets a case or which one of us gets a stain on us, yeah, all it takes is one brand to go, oh, you know, we're not going to sponsor this tour. We're not going to have that advert. We don't want to do that clothing collab or that restaurant chain with them. It's just it's just one. And I'm not going to name names, but we know all the young boys specifically. Yeah? You're bringing girls on stage and you're getting very touchy feely. And I'm there at home and I'm thinking this is going to turn into a madness because maybe 
let me call it how it is. Maybe, okay, the black girls are coming on stage. They get the vibe. Let's just say that. They go down and everything's fine. But maybe you make a mistake and feel like, oh, this girl knows the vibe and she's not from the culture. She doesn't understand what's going on. You take her on stage and you touch her in a place that she's not comfortable with. The genre is going to go down the actual drain. And I know someone's going to be like, oh, yes, it's not that deep. But, yo, it really can get that deep, though. I've seen genres come and go, especially in the UK. Oh, if the UK knows to do something, the UK knows how to take a genre, love it, pump it up and then drop it as soon as another one comes. I don't know what it is in the air when it comes to the UK and consumers and music here. It's like we can't allow more than one genre, as in popping genre, to succeed simultaneously at the same time. It's like, okay, we got grime. We're loving grime. Oh, yeah, but you know... UK rap is here. Okay, UK rap is here. We love UK rap. Oh, but you know, UK drill is here. Okay, we love UK drill. It's like, why do we have to keep deading off genres after genres? It's like, house is here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but then there's jungle. Oh, yeah, jungle's here. Oh, yeah, but you know, we got like funky house. Oh, we got drum and bass. Like, fam, like, let's let all the genres live. I didn't know funky house would die like that. I'm not going to lie. I thought Funky House was here to stay. It was the music. If you go into the dance, you go into a motive. Funky House is playing. You're getting up and you're dancing. I never knew it would be a time where it's like you're hearing drill as opposed to Funky House in the actual club. Even in the UK, we had Afro swing, like UK Afro swing. We had UK Afro beats as in people that were probably either came here at a young age or actually British born of descendants from, you know, your Ghana's, your Nigeria's, your South Africa's, and they were doing the damn thing, especially in the Midlands, especially when it came to the uni tours. As soon as Afrobeat comes, it's like, oh yeah, these are the authentic ones because they live there. What happens? We drop UK Afrobeats. I beg, like, the UK, can we let things live, like, more than one thing live at the same time? It's actually getting very sad, because when drill dies, and it will, what's next? What are we going to hail up? I don't know, but ugh, my brother's an Afrobeats, man. Get your money and get it clean. When it comes to country music, they don't have to bring the girls up on stage. Pop music, they're not doing the bumping and the grinding too tough like that. Unless it's a, an actual dancer that's been booked. The choreography has been done time and time again. They know what to expect. Even when Janet Jackson was going out on tour, and I'm talking about, um, was it the Red Velvet tour? Something like that, I can't remember. She would bring the people up, do her little routine. You know what to expect. So if you're at the 10th city that she's gone to, you know what's happening. Then they'd go back down. No one touches anywhere in a place that they weren't expecting, okay? Nowadays, the Afrobeat artists are moving like dancehall artists. They're moving like bashment artists. You want to bring women on stage, people, okay? You want to be doing the bumping and the grinding. The cultures are different. Do not force it because one of you lot, are one dance move or one touch away from saying, I was uncomfortable. This was not consented. And, okay, you could do a thing where, okay, everyone that purchased a ticket, you have consented to if you, in the likelihood, were to go up on stage and the artist were to demonstrate or do a dance move on you, I'm covered because you've already consented to it. Uh, consent may cover some things, it doesn't cover everything. Because I'm thinking some of these people, yeah, and like I said, it's the young boys. You got managers, you got PRs, you got sisters, you got aunties, they're all there. I know they're sitting in the green room. And not one person goes, Yeah, I know this is a cool dance move and you know this little routine in the tour is cute and that, but you might want to cool it a bit. I'm not saying don't bring the girls up on stage, but just cool it because Afrobeats doesn't do all of that. Afrobeats doesn't have to do all of that. And if we're going to talk about African culture, yes, women can shake their hips and gyrate and do a lot of actions. But more time, you don't even have to touch them. It's something that you just admire from afar. Keyword, admire 
these women from afar and you won't get into trouble. You know what's been going on in the US. For a long time, it was quiet. There were no complaints. There were no accusations, no lawsuits, nothing. And then we've seen this whole wave of me too. We've seen a whole wave of consent. And all I'm saying is that no one should be walking around, whether you're famous, whether you're number one artist of the year, thinking that you're untouchable. Everybody can get touched. Okay, no pun intended. But all I'm saying is that I've waited a long time for Afrobeats to be appreciated. I've waited a long time to let everyone know that we are cool. But if none of your aunties, your sisters, your managers, your PRs are going to tell you this, I'm going to tell you this. My brothers in Afrobeats, you already had the number ones before you even went on stage. The records were already selling before you did the tours. So if it's by fire, by force that you have a little moment in your routine where you're like, oh, I'm going to bring a girl on stage. If it's not the dancer that you've already agreed and practiced the moves with, I beg you, keep it light, keep it cute. We don't have to do what we saw with the Omale concert because that's too much. And this Jess girl, whatever she calls herself, she seems a bit, dangerous and i'm not talking about good dangerous i'm talking catch a case dangerous because i don't even know what this story time is going to entail but it's not going to look pretty that's all i'm saying so when it comes to expectations and relationships i feel that we should be very confident to state what we want in the first date It's fine to state what we want in the first phone call and if someone's too scared by what you're saying or how upfront you are with how you're asking for what your expectations are let them go because you're not saying oh I want you to do xyz it's more or less a thing of me saying this is what I expect are you willing to do this yes or no if you can fantastic if you can't I wish you nothing but the best but we cannot waste time in relationships get so far deep into them that we go you know I've already been with this guy for x amount of years you know maybe it will get better just go along with it no 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 because you're in a situation you don't you're not happy with he's in a situation that he doesn't care for for some reason you always feel like he can't do what you want he literally is physically mentally incapable of doing it because he's just not that guy and here you have two miserable people 20 years from now that's all i'm saying so when it comes to expectations say them with chess it's okay for people not to reach your expectations it might take a, a 10 20 guys going nah that's not me not really my steez but when you get to that person who has the same morals and values as you has the same level of expectations it's i'm not saying you're not going to argue but you're not going to have as many arguments because you share a lot of the same qualities morals values and expectations when it comes to relationships and if there's one thing you need to do when it comes to relationships is minimize the arguments as much as you can you're always going to argue you're not avoiding that but the way you argue is what's important you don't have to be shouting swearing effing and blinding calling people out of their name and it getting god forbid physical you can have heated exchanges you can have conversations you can have disagreements all of these things is up to you as to how you want to set pace in your relationship what you don't want to do is look at the person you're with and say wow we don't want the same things because you don't have to be the same person but at least want the same things and be on the same page because if you don't even want the same things you're not on the same page then what are you doing together it's giving i just want company and that's how i was cracking up this week because studies have shown in the uk that ever since the recession was announced that divorce rates have decreased by about 42%. I think it was 42%. I need to double check this here. But I was laughing. And the reason why I was laughing is because this just goes to show that a lot of people are with each other because of money, the finances. It's like it's too expensive to divorce you or the lifestyle that I've grown accustomed to. I'm not going to have it if I leave you. So let me just firm it. I like the house. I like the car we drive. The fact that, you know, the garden is manicured by the gardener. We get a couple of holidays throughout the year for the kids. I enjoy it too. So why not go along with the ride? And then it makes you think further back to COVID when you saw the 
amount of domestic violence cases that are reported increased as well. So you think to yourself, okay, 42%, this one decreased, this one increased. How many people are actually in happy relationships? You get one chance at life. I'm not saying go chase after one fairy tale that I never told you was out there, but make sure you both want this. That's all I'm going to say. But hey, guys, you've been listening or watching another episode of Hey Sis. Before you go, make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe on Spotify as well, because if you're on the train and you're like, yo, what am I going to do? I can't really download this episode because you don't have YouTube premium. Well, you can download an offline version of the episodes of Hey Sis on Spotify. And yes, I've seen the comments about, yeah, get on to Apple Podcasts. We're working on it. But to be honest with you, Spotify gives better deals when it comes to putting your your actual podcast there. So I'll see. But for now, you might, hey, sis might be the reason why you download Spotify. You hear that, Spotify? We might be the reason people are downloading the whole app. So, hey, until then, I'll keep you updated on that one if we do come on Apple at any point. We'll see. Um, Obviously, subscribe to hey, sis underscore UK, the actual channel on instagram the page we got clips dropping every day we got quotes we got behind the scenes stuff so a a little cheeky bts here and there never hurt anybody and the youtube is very very important make sure you subscribe to the youtube because you know we're gonna up the game when it comes to the show that's all i can say but i did tell you i have good news and here's my good news i have actually written a book Woo-hoo-hoo. I've written a book, but I'm launching it in stages. So the first part of the stages is that I'm actually launching the audiobook. That means you're going to hear a lot more of Lil on me. I'm launching the audiobook in episodes on Spotify. So with that one, it's going to be for subscribers only. It's a very affordable amount. Listen, I've taken into account that we are in a recession, a cost of living crisis, all that stuff. I've also literally crunched the numbers because obviously time, effort, everything to compile a book, it ain't free. But I've crunched the numbers to an amount that's very affordable. It's going to be very enjoyable. And it's going to be an audio book like no other because I like an audio book, okay? I like driving, hearing an audio book, but it's very cut and shut. Like they're literally just reading the book. However, I'm reading the book. I'm giving my opinion into things. I'm asking you questions throughout the book. It's going to feel like you are hearing a voice note from your friend. It's going to feel like we're on FaceTime. It's very personalized. It's perfectly imperfect. And I feel like that just encompasses Hasis as a whole. We're here healing. We're here shameless. We're here growing. And we're here keeping it real all day, every day. So I hope you love it. All the details about the book is going to be there. Okay. By the time this episode drops... There will be a couple episodes out for you to really sink your teeth and get a feel for it. But it's going to be a good one. And it's basically, the book is called Hey Sis, I'm the Big Sister You Never Had. And growing up, I didn't have a big sister. I didn't have older cousins growing up with me in the same country as me anyway. And I was an older sister. So a lot of firsts, I had to learn myself. And there are just some things that you, your mum wouldn't think to have to tell you if you get my drift. So whether you're older than me or younger than me, it doesn't matter. But it's one of those things where I'm the girlfriend that, listen, I ain't, I'm not going to shame you. Ain't no shame here. We can call it how it is. And they are antidotes through stories of my own personal things that I've gone through. Things that I've had permission from. Let me put that out there. I've had permission from people whom I know to put in the book. And it were problem were problem solving along the way. So there's situations that you may not have been in, thank God, or situations that you might find yourself coming across that you might fall into. And this is where the big sister element comes into it because I'm here to make sure you're not going to get clowned out here in these streets. No one's going to take you for a fool. Mm -mm. Not on my watch. So these are the things I would have loved someone to tell 16-year-old me, 18-year-old me, 21-year-old me, But guess what? We get better and better with time. And that's what it's all about. So yeah, subscribers only. It's on exclusive glue. We're launching it episode by episode. So it's going to feel like a little telenovela in your ear. It's really nice. 
And then later on, we will be taking it to the physical pages for my um, bookworms out there. But for now, enjoy the audio. Until then, make sure you stay blessed. Because she moves like a queen and I like what I see and I want to get more of that. Right. I address any blow success. Lay down as you decompress. Come mind and forget the stress. Got the nine to five because he's trying to change his life. He can't help it but to show his bad side. So he me just see when he want that good ride. Follow my stride, you know you want a good time. Pick any card, I know it won't decline. You know how to please me, never tease me. Keep me in Givenchy, laced in Gucci. Quick, take the key. Drive to Chelsea, uh -huh. he Escalini, uh -huh. all the Linguini, he ordered the chateau. We got it to go, then flew to the chateau. You already know, friends telling me this.